ever glad I got my tent down and stuff packed away before this started. Well, hello and thank you for joining me on my big adventure. I'm currently about 27 kilometers into it in a little village called Shediac Bridge. I'm planning a 700 kilometer trip over eight days around the north central part of New Brunswick. The ultimate destination is uh, Mount Carlton Provincial Park. Uh, I'm going through a lot of wilderness areas. The first part is mostly highway riding and then there'll be some gravel in the middle. I didn't mention back in Shediac Bridge is the wind today. The wind's just crazy, but uh, fortunately for me, it's uh, mostly been a tailwind, so I'm making pretty good time. After riding 115 kilometers, I arrived at my first campsite. Just in time, it's now starting to rain. <laughs> so I got the tent put up in record time. Uh, it's not the best campsite. It's as you can probably hear the trucks going by. It's pretty close to the road, uh, but there's a stream nearby. So one thing I like to do to save on food prep time on an overnight trip or the first day of a multi-day trip is uh, I bring leftovers from home. I like to do that because my wife Karen is a really good cook, so the leftovers are really good. Well, it's about 5.20 in the morning. Uh, wasn't the best night's sleep. I often don't sleep so well the first night in the tent. And the traffic noise was quite bad. Uh, had to wear earplugs, which I don't find that comfortable. Uh, so it's going to be a bit of a long day. Well, it's seven o'clock, I'm finally even camp. It took me forever to pack. The mosquitoes are just ferocious here. That's why I was cooking down by the river. Well, also because it's such a nice spot, but just because the, the breeze, the bugs weren't so bad. So anyways, uh, heading towards the Mary Machine now. So there's the bridge across the Mary Machine. I'm actually gonna go under it and follow the river for a little bit. So I stopped in Miramichi, got supplies for the next three days, four days, and uh, now I'm climbing up out of Miramichi. I've got about uh, 40 kilometers done, and I got about 60 left to go. Gravel sign, and so it begins. This is the worst gravel ever. It's just loose, rolly rock. Oh my God, this is gonna be horrible. I hope it gets better further on. Yeah, road conditions have improved tremendously. This is nothing wrong with this at all. I'll be able to make good time on this.
There it is, the mighty Nipissequit River. And this is crown land, so I am able to camp here. So down here, there's a little road that goes down to there. So I'm gonna go down there. Probably down in that grass over there is where I'll be camping this evening. Now you're looking at a new man. That felt wonderful. It was a hot day and a lot of hill climbing. I left uh, this morning's campsite at about seven o'clock and got here at 5.30, so it took me 10 and a half hours to get here. I stopped in Miramichi for about an hour, so nine and a half hours, and I did about 100 kilometers. Probably the slowest 100K I've ever done but it was just hill after hill after hill. Gonna set up my camp, have something to eat, and just uh, relax and enjoy this million dollar view. And I got it all to myself. There's not another soul around. I'm just sitting here down by the river, having a beer, got the camera set up there, doing a time lapse of the sunset. So if it turns out well, that should be the next thing you see in this video. Well, it's 8.30, I'm finally packed up. Took me a while to get moving this morning, but uh, I'm now ready to roll, so if all goes well, next stop, Mount Carlton. And just to get back onto the road, I have to start with a hike a bike. Last section of the road has been pretty good and I've been making pretty good time but I'd make better time but I have to keep stopping to take in all this beautiful scenery look at that it's just gorgeous there's a lot of hills but then once once you go down you come down to these beautiful water courses it's just wonderful bike time now. This thing is steep. Uh, I don't know if the camera does it justice, you can't really tell, but it is. It is steep. The end of the gravel. Now I go that way. Well there, only nine more kilometers to go. Ooh. Well, gotta do the tourist shot. There's the sign, Mount Carlton. We have arrived. That was a hard day today. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what it was. 
I think it was around 100, but it might have been more. But it was just up and down, up and down. There was even, I was even hiking, biking on the highway. There was a couple of sections that were so steep. Uh, right now I've got uh, my tent hanging up because there was all that beautiful mist rising from the river. Well, that soaked everything, so I put it away wet and haven't had a chance to dry it out yet. Uh, so I'm just having some ramen right now. I'm going to make something a little better later on, but I just need to get something in me. I tend not to eat enough when I'm biking. I just want to keep going. So. Well, I think that's going to be it for today. I'm pretty tired. I still got to finish setting up there, have something else to eat. And I'm just exhausted, so it's going to be an early night. I'm camping here tomorrow. Tomorrow's a rest day, no biking tomorrow. I had originally thought I might do some hiking on the, some of the trails here, but I've done enough climbing and I've got enough more. I got more climbing to do, so I think we'll just leave it here and uh, tomorrow I'll just uh, show you a little bit more around the park. So I'm really glad to have a quiet day today. I'm just going to head over to, there's, there's another campground here uh, where the RVs park. Uh, there's showers there I can use and Wi-Fi. So I'll be able to get a forecast and uh, let Karen know that I'm not on the side of the road. And uh, yeah, just a, a real chill day today. Just going to relax, take care of my body and uh, enjoy these beautiful surroundings. So I have my first repair job to do. Uh, this little part here that holds my fender, because I'm using uh, the threaded hole to hold the, uh, the rack, I had to use one of those adapters that goes where the skewer goes through, and that piece has snapped right off. So uh, there's a mounting hole here for disc brakes that I don't use, so I'm going to try to attach it there. I don't think my, uh, I have anything long enough, so I'm probably just going to end up using zip ties. Oh, well now I'm screwed. I thought maybe I could, because I have a bolt that wasn't long enough to hold both of them, I thought I'd put one with where my, where my rack mounts and one where the disc brake mounts. And as soon as I turned it, it broke right off. So now my rack is unhooked. And that's a lot of weight for zip ties. I don't know what I'm going to do now. Well, <laughs> I don't know how well this is going to work. I used paracord for the um, for the rack. I got this line up here going down and wrapped around. And then I got zip ties to hold my uh, fender struts. So I guess... Uh, gonna have to take it easy for the first little while to see how it works uh, at least there's no gravel I think it was all that banging around on the gravel that did it so this is how the other half live I'm over at the uh, RV campground just had a shower that felt good just looking at the view of the mountain Now I'm just chilling down by the lake uh, in front of my campsite. Uh, 
Just went for about a 7K ride on some dirt with a fully loaded bag and it seemed to be holding up okay, so I think I'm going to be okay. Um, it's, it's asphalt the rest of the way, so hopefully it's going to hold, but we shall see. Anyways, I think I'm going to leave it here for today and uh, I'll get back to you tomorrow. I'm just going to chill and relax now. Well, nothing sucks more than packing up in the rain. I don't think it's gonna last all day, but I just hate putting everything away wet, but oh well. Well, that's me loaded up and ready to go. I pack things a little differently. I got less weight on the broken side and I, I used to have my uh, chair hanging back here. I've moved that up front. So hopefully it'll hold up, we'll, we'll see. Anyways, this is me. Heading off to Plaster Rock. I forgot to mention, it's July 1st. It's Canada Day. And I'm really enjoying showing you my part of the country. This is a great country we have here. So I didn't film that much of the last part into uh, Plaster Rock. I was trying to make time because I didn't have a reservation for the campground. I'm not wild camping tonight because uh, there's no crown land around here and I don't want to trespass. So uh, made it to the campsite. It's uh, more of an RV type place, but uh, that has its advantages. Under this uh, rain jacket is a power pole and I'm getting my battery banks charged up. I've even got my own water. I. Uh, took a shower and did some laundry in the sink and then it was a torrential downpour. I had left the park to go down the road to a takeout place to get something to eat and while I was gone it just poured so looks like I'm going to be packing up a wet tent and uh, putting on wet clothes again tomorrow. Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in morning, sailors take warning. Let's hope that just applies at sea because that's the direction I'm heading in. Well, it's about 9 o'clock. I'm finally packed up and ready to roll, and it has just started raining. I'm hearing thunder off in the distance, so I'm just sitting here in a shelter in the park. Uh, where I'm heading to now, uh, the Renews Plaster Rock Highway, or Plaster Rock to Renews Highway, runs through the north central part of the province and there's nothing there for about 137 kilometers it's pure wilderness i'm not planning on doing the whole thing today it's uh, 900 meters of climbing in that distance i'm planning on stopping at a place called mcgraw brook which is about 100 kilometers away and 800 and some meters of climbing so it's going to be a long day i hope the rain holds off it's only they're only showing rain for the next few hours so Hopefully by the end of the day I'll be able to dry out. I'm, I've got damp clothes on and everything's packed away wet and just, you know, what are you going to do? Now I'm hearing thunder and the rain is picking up and I'm seriously considering there's a motel right next door to this campsite and I think that's where I'm going to spend the day and tonight. The weather forecast for tomorrow is much better and I think it's time to call it off for today. Oh man, am I ever glad I got my tent down and stuff packed away before this started. Look at this. Oh, you say I'm under shelter. And now I've got even better shelter. It's actually not too bad out there today, but uh, 
tomorrow's forecast is looking much better and I've checked the forecast for all the areas I'm going to be riding through and uh, it looks like the next three days should be pretty good so I think I made a good call to uh, to come over here uh, I got stuff uh, hanging up drying and uh, just going to get things ready and uh, head out tomorrow so that's it for today I'll get back to you in the morning There's the Tobake River, and that's where I'm headed. No gas for 137 kilometers. No problem, I got this. Well, after a day of rest and relaxation, I'm finally back on the road. I'm heading due east. Uh, you just saw the sign, 137 kilometers before anything. I'm about a half an hour into it. Things are going well. There's no wind. And if the weather forecast is to be believed, I might even get a bit of a tailwind later on. So uh, looking forward to that. And uh, so this is me heading down the road. McGraw Brook. This is where I'm going to stop for the night. All I have to do now is just find a place to pitch my tent. So I found this little spot right here. Somebody's camped here before. There's a fire pit. And it's right on the brook. You couldn't be any closer. Just take you down here. It's not that far from the road, but the sound of the brook and I don't think there'll be much traffic at night along here. Should be pretty nice. What a beautiful spot. Makes all that pedaling in the sun worth it. But I gotta go put on some bug spray. It's awful buggy down here. But it's just absolutely beautiful. Well, after a hot day in the sun on the bike, I've got dinner in me, I've got a couple of drinks in me, just sitting here on a rock in the middle of the stream. Yeah, I'm in my happy place right now. If you're traveling by bike and you're wild camping, I cannot over recommend getting a chair. The extra two pounds is well worth it for the comfort that you have at the end of the night. Well, good morning. Look at that beautiful day behind me. So I was gonna 
pack up, have some breakfast, and head out. Well, it took me forever to get ready this morning. It's already 9 o'clock, but I'm finally ready to roll out. Uh, such a beautiful spot, I really didn't want to leave. Um, not sure what tonight's destination is. I've got about 177 kilometers to reach home. Uh, I originally was going to go back the same way I came up to the Miramichi, but I'm taking a different route back, so I don't know where I'm going to camp exactly. So I'm going to do about 90 kilometers, that's about half the distance, and then I'm going to start looking for a, for a spot. And maybe I'll just try to go as far as I can today. So I made it through the Blaster Rock to Renews Highway. Now I'm about to cross the Miramichi River. I'm going to take the shorter route back to uh, Moncton Dieppe area. So I've done about 60 kilometers so far and now I'm in a place called Barnaby River. It's a beautiful little spot. Well this road was a big mistake. The shoulder is almost unrivaled just big trucks screaming by. Uh, I'm gonna have to try to find another route. I don't want to go back. It's gonna be too much extra distance. But... So I just checked the map. I'm gonna have to put up with this for about another 20 kilometers or so. Then I can get onto a small road that takes me back to the highway I originally came up on. So in order to get off that last highway that I was on and to get onto the other main road back to Moncton, it's about 30 kilometer uh, crossroad here and I've been making pretty good time on it. I've had a tailwind most of the way. I should be to the number 11 highway in a matter of minutes now and then it's uh, still a ways to Moncton. So at the end of the day I ended up checking into this commercial campground. My plan to change route at the last minute would have saved about 25 kilometers and uh, going from highway 126 to highway 11 added about 35 kilometers so in total I added about 10 kilometers to what I had planned. Not that that really mattered much. It was This trip wasn't really about having an itinerary and sticking to a schedule. It was just about I had an idea of where I wanted to go and I wanted to explore certain places and that's what I did. So in the end, it, it all worked out well. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for sticking to the end. And uh, if you stuck with it this far, uh, hitting the like button would be much appreciated. And if you really liked it, uh, hitting the subscribe button would be even better. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my partner Karen, who puts up with me going, with, puts up with me in my shenanigans and going on these big adventures. It's nice to have somebody that uh, allows you to to do what you want to do. So I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed it.